Hello and welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. I am happy to be back from Hawaii. Just kidding, I'd rather be in Hawaii. But still, it is good to be here making video content again on the channel. If you're listening on audio, hello. We are talking about a question that I had from our Discord, which is this. Why is Jerry Tillery needing to prove himself now? And I, I posed that to the Discord because Arjun asked for some questions. Like if we were going to ask Staley one question, what would it be? And I asked, why is Jerry Tillery needing to prove himself now? And the more I thought about it, the more I wanted to do a video because I couldn't think of a reason. What's the difference? Now, I know why Jerry Tillery is having to prove himself is because he's not good. <laughs> but what changed from last year to this year? What changed for Brandon Staley? Let's get into it. So, of course, got a PowerPoint presentation. Here we go. So just to recap last year real quick. The whole golden child thing with Jerry Tillery. He logs zero snaps in the preseason, despite the fact that he's never had a full real offseason before because 2019 he was hurt. 2020 was the COVID offseason. So I guess last year kind of was too, but not as much. Jerry Tillery finally has a chance to play in preseason games to get used to this 3-4 scheme. And he got to skip it. He got to skip it with a lot of other really good starters. Maybe some not so much as well, but still... You know, Rashawn Slater, yeah, he's a rookie. He had to be out there. Ode Ibushi, he had to be out there. Kenneth Murray, I believe, was out there. Oh, no, he wasn't. But Kaiser White and Drew Tranquil were. Those guys were out there. Kaiser White, I think, has been a little better in his career up until that point than Jerry Tillery. But, alas, Tillery did not have to play. August 26th, Jerry Tillery, uh, or should I say Brandon Staley says, Jerry Tillery had a phenomenal camp, which is fine. I don't expect him to be, you know, oh, Jerry Tillery sucks. <laughs> so I get it. Um, then we hear somewhat during the season, I believe mid-season or so, about uh, Ch that Tillery is viewed as the golden child. You know, all of us at that point were wondering about why the heck is this run defense so bad, and why is Jerry Tillery still out there? Well, we asked, and part of the reason you know, the response we got was he's the golden child. He's the golden child, and we'll talk about a little bit more of that in a bit, and also the accountability issue, which we've talked about on the episode before, or, or our show before that is. There's an accountability issue. December 27th, Joe Reedy, uh, one of the Chargers beat writers, tweets in response to Steven asking about why Braden Fajoko wouldn't get more snaps over someone like Jerry Tillery, at least early on. Joe Reedy writes, or tweets, I should say, because the one person we agree he should be getting more snaps over is one of the GM's sacred first round picks, but the head coach does a nice job of dancing around it when we ask how that player is doing. So yeah, that kind of hints at more of a front office thing, an ownership thing, a general manager thing more than Saley. But again, we'll talk about all those things in a bit. And then the result of that was Tillery getting the fourth most defensive snaps behind the two main safeties and Kaiser White. He was number one among interior defense alignment and edge players on the Chargers defense in terms of snap percentage. And for all of that, for being the golden child, prized player, sit out the preseason phenomenal camp, he gave the Chargers among interior defense alignment with at least at that 50% snap cutoff threshold, 40th out of 50 in pass rush productivity, 43rd out of 50 in pass rush win rate, and 75th out of 83 in run stop percentage. So he stunk. <laughs> so my question is, what was the difference in 2020 and 2021, those two years, for Jerry Tillery to make the 2021 offseason his, you know, he gets the royal treatment that year. But then this year, 2022, this offseason, it's a complete, hey, you're probably potentially going to be replaced. Fifth year option decline. He has improved himself kind of offseason. What's so statistically dissimilar from his previous two years to the last year? And is the film all that different? Why? I don't get how he went from, or at least before I did the video, I didn't get why Jerry Tillery was such the golden child, despite having an eh start to his career, and why he's now, you know, Daniel Popper thinks he's a roster bubble player. I don't believe that. I think he's a roster lock. I just think his starting job's in jeopardy. But what is the difference? What is so different? Let's look at the numbers. By the numbers, if you, you know, no matter how you slice it, Jerry Tillery, for the most part, is the same player. He's not very productive. He's not very good statistically. Film suggests the same. 
we're just talking about numbers here. In 2020, his pass rush win rate and pass rush productivity, those were better than 2021. On the flip side, his run stop rate and average depth of tackle in 2021 was better than 2020. And he did, you know, now he did play about 100 more snaps in 2021. And by the way, he was and he was an interior defense alignment this year, where in 2020, he was the 4-3 defensive end, you know, interior sort of type. Guys got hurt. So there were several games he had to play 40, 50 snaps as a defensive end rather than interior guy. But still, um, he got better statistically, again, with more snaps and in a more defined role in sacks, run stops, missed tackle rate, tackles, and penalties, meaning he had fewer penalties. So if you look at the numbers, and you should if you're listening just on audio, maybe look at the table that I have here. Jerry Tillery really has been the same player. Yes, there are some years. There's one year he's better than the other, but he's kind of the same player. Like It's not good. It's not great. It's definitely not great. And it's barely not good. Or it's barely even good. I think it's not good. They're not so different those last two years. So again, why is there a difference there? If you look at his entire career, granted, it's, it's very short. It's only been three seasons. The numbers, like he's never been great. 2019 he's not been he wasn't good and that was you know rookie year adjusting was hurt no off season fighting with other snaps and players for snaps i guess um, played about half as many snaps as the next two years wasn't great then 2020 guess what wasn't great then 2021 also wasn't great there's nowhere in his career where you can say looking at the entire year that he had a great season can't really say that he had a good season either even as a rookie you can't say that that is a good season I think maybe you disagree. Is the film all that different to me? I haven't studied a ton of defense. I generally focus more on the offense. Is he still being pushed around in the run game? You tell me you've been watching the games. Yeah, of course he has. Is he still drawing unnecessary penalties? Yep. Is power and leverage still a problem? Absolutely. That goes obviously hand in hand with the run game. Can he flash his potential in some games? Sure. Jerry Tillery has some great moments and Gavino Borquez and I broke that down when he played the Chiefs. We broke down that game and some other stuff. He can absolutely flash some great stuff when he locks out or when he rips through or whatever. There's some stuff that he does well, for sure. It's just not consistent. So is the film all that different? So the numbers, the numbers haven't changed really. They have like the number has changed. But there really isn't a big difference for the most part. And the film, in my opinion, is the same. I'm not, am, am I missing something? Do you know what I'm like, what I'm missing here? I don't know. But that's all not that different. He's just not a good player, unfortunately. But we talk about the previous year again. Doesn't have to play the preseason. Phenomenal camp, man. Golden child. Accountability issues. GM wants him out there. You know, gets all the snaps unopposed. You go with that to this year. This is from the podcast account. Brandon Silly says there will be an open competition along the defensive line, but Sebastian Joseph Day and Austin Johnson have really established themselves. They're the leaders of the group. Staley was asked about Jerry Tillery and where how he fits into that group. He sorted the defensive players into two categories, proven players and players who are trying to prove themselves. He put Sebastian Joseph Day and Austin Johnson in the first category and said he put Tiller in the second one. What changed? <laughs> what is the difference? I'll answer that question in a bit. But what is the difference? Because the film looks the same to me. The stats are about the same to me as well. Not a good player on paper with the stats or on film. What changed? Why is he... And I'll go back to my question that I wrote out. What's the difference in 2020 and 2021 seasons for Jerry Tillery to make the 2020 on off season, the Royal treatment and 2022 a complete. He hasn't proven himself kind of off season. What's the difference? Let's get into it. Five reasons. The first one is a guess. I suppose you could say, but let's call it an educated one. If you will. I think that Staley, this offseason, and like really this offseason when the season ended, received input from his players, reflected on some of his poor personal decisions last year, 
and made a change. I think that there were issues. I know that there were issues on and off the field that didn't sit well with some people. Banks over Broughton was a problem for some people. I know for a fact that Broughton was hurt by this decision. Now, of course, you're cut by a team, cut by the team that drafted you. You're a late round pick. Didn't really have much of a career up until that point. So you're kind of like, oh, shoot. I might not have an NFL career anymore. But Broughton really balled out in training camp. I thought him and Justin Jones were absolutely fantastic, explosive players against the run and rushing the passer. They were the two best interior defense alignment in training camp. No question from me. And I think most would agree, especially with Justin Jones. Let's bring in Eric Banks. Who? Oh, he's with the Rams. Okay. And that decision in particular was heavily discussed. I'll say that much. And I will say this as well. There's no reason that I, a, listen, I, you know, I, I work hard for this. I do the podcast, whatever, but I'm nobody. I don't have a check mark. I'm not a beat writer. No one employs me to cover the team or whatever. It should not get to me that there are problems in the building and that there are discussions that players are having about the defensive side of the ball. I didn't hear about this off offense, by the way. And it's not just one position group. It's very evident and obvious in the interior defense alignment because of Jerry Tillery, the defense line room because of Jerry Tillery. But it ain't just that position group. It should not get to me that there are problems and questions and discussions and things like that. But it did. Because stuff like this, Banks over Brown, the golden child sitting out, you know, you know, the preseason and getting just unopposed snaps. He was the snap hog. Yeah, some of that was injuries and COVID. Like Tillery was just sometimes just the only guy. So he did get a, a lot of snaps because of that. But there was no competition. Or there was <laughs> these guys competed in camp, competed in camp, competed in camp. And then it was the same three starters. And, you know, Broughton was kicked out. Foco didn't make the roster. Merrill made it for two seconds and was kicked out. Gaziano didn't make it. Banks went in. Banks didn't earn it. Banks stunk. And then so the locker room's like, what was that? And it hurts people. And people are asking for competition. And that's not just the fans or the media members. There is a desire for true competition. Look, do, do any of these guys think they're beating out Derwin James or Joey Bosa or whatever? No, of course not. Khalil Mack is safe, I'm pretty sure. But outside of that, you know, outside of your 22 starters and really maybe like your 15 defined starters, 16 defined starters, they want competition. That brings out the best in your defense and your entire team. You don't want that internal buzz to get to a freaking podcaster like me. No. So I think that Staley recognized that there were mistakes there last year, reflected on some of those decisions that he made. And he goes, listen, we're going to make a change. There's going to be more competition. And he said as much. There will be an open competition along the defensive line. Thank goodness. How much better could the defensive line had you know been last year if Fahoko got more reps, if Gaziano got more reps, if Merrill got more reps? How much better could it have been? It might have been great. Did you watch the Steelers game? Wasn't that a lot of fun? Najee Harris, what do you get? 2.3 yards per carry? Wasn't that great watching a bunch of fighting, hard-nosed, undrafted free agents beating the crap out of the Steelers offensive line in the run game. That was awesome. They earned it. And went back to Tillery. <laughs> and the run defense was terrible. So I really think Staley took that input or at least reflected on what he did wrong last year. And he's going to change it. There's going to be competition. Reason number two. Sorry, I, that was a long way of explaining reason number one. The next ones will be a lot faster. Reason number one, Jay Rogers is the new interior defensive line coach. It was Giff Smith. Now it's Jay Rogers. Now again, 
Another puzzling decision. Why was Jay Rogers not the interior defensive line coach to begin with? I don't have a problem with Giff Smith isolated being the interior defensive line coach because he was with the Chargers. He was the defensive line coach. That's just what he did. But now you bring in Jay Rogers. Why was Jay Rogers not the interior defensive line coach? It's not like Giff Smith couldn't coach outside. Heck, they've shown that they believe that because now Giff Smith is coaching edge rushers. And Ronaldo Hill, you just listened to his press conference. We're about to talk about it today on the podcast. Today is Wednesday the 8th. And he says, you know what? Jay Rogers knows exactly what Staley wants and the way he wants to call things because he was with them in, in Chicago. And so we're really happy to have him there. Why was that not the choice to begin with? Again, really weird defensive decisions for the Chargers. But now Rodgers is the interior defensive line coach. And maybe he thinks, that guy sucks. <laughs> so he's going to have to earn his job. And we need to bring someone else in to fight with Tillery for a starting job. And now he has to earn it. It's possible. And listen, Jay Rogers is kind of like Kevin Coger to me. He's got a track record of knowing what he's doing. Jay Rogers, wasn't he a defensive you know, coach of the year or whatever it was, or position coach of the year um, with Chicago? Didn't he develop some of these great players or, or solid players, take you know later talent, make them better? Like same thing with Kevin Coger and like Steven Anderson, for example. Jay Rogers has a good track record. So if he says, listen, Tillery, uh, I've been watching him for a year as the edge guy. And you know what? There's got to bring competition. I think it's very possible. That's why we're seeing a change in the way the Chargers are approaching Jerry Tillery this year. Reason number three, Staley no longer has upstairs pressure to start anyone or favor anyone and or has complete defensive personnel control. Now, the latter is true. He definitely has defensive personnel control. No doubt about that. Brandon Staley, it's his defense. Very obvious with Khalil Mack, Sebastian Joseph Day, Morgan Fox, JC Jackson, JT Woods. It's what he wants. Maybe the offense is different. I don't know. But he definitely has full control over the defense. The former part about Staley no longer having pressure upstairs to start anyone or favor anyone it's speculation because we don't really know that was ever true to begin with. We really don't know that that's, you know, he's no longer there now, but it's possible. And I'm, I have to address it because a lot of fans do believe this, that, you know, they said, Hey, we're going to back off and let you do your thing. And Sealy goes, great. Tillery, get your, <laughs> get your ass to the sideline. It's very possible. Reason number four, two more reasons, guys, almost there. Staley spent a year with Jerry Tillery on and on the field and in the building. I guess I shouldn't say on the field. I should say the sideline. Uh, but, you know, maybe Staley went into the year kind of no, you know, watching Jerry Tillery's film and what he could do. And he thought, all right, you know, I, I don't really know him very well, but I know he's got something that we can make really special. Then he spent a year with him and realized, oh, so he's just not really great in any system and he's not productive in any system and in some cases he regressed from last year to this year and maybe i'm not saying this is true but i have to bring up these reasons and i have to try to speculate here maybe he just wasn't a fan of him you know the way he practiced the way he carried himself maybe he wasn't a great leader i don't know again i'm not saying that's true i don't know that to be true i've never even heard that being an issue i'm just saying maybe that's possible I know a lot of Chargers fans were kind of like, eh, maybe Jerry Tillery should show up to OTAs now that his job is in jeopardy. I, I think he should have, but whatever. Can't really prove that that's true or not. But still, you spend a year with a guy, you think he's going to be great, then you kind of get catfished. You know, <laughs> like you're just like, oh, oh, I, I, this profile looked a lot better on my phone. Now that I see it in person, well, uh, not quite what I was expecting. Last reason I'll give is Morgan Fox is the starter. I don't know that. But going back to the competition thing, you know, there's strong chatter about Morgan Fox being the starter and that he signed knowing that he was going to go get that starting job. Comes from a good source. And it's possible that Steely's just like, look, I'm just going to say in the media that, you know, we're going to have a competition. You know, I don't want to say that Morgan Fox is a starter. just going to beat out Jerry Tillery. You know, you want Jerry Tillery to not be you know, so hurt by the news and just instantly now <laughs> it'd be funny if they just handed the job to morgan fox after jerry tillery you know didn't have to do anything for his job and morgan fox didn't have to do anything for his current job that'd be funny i think it's just possible 
yeah, Staley's kind of playing the media and saying, ah, you know, Tillery's going to have to prove himself. You know, he's got a shot to do it. He can do it. He's not a proven player yet, but he can be. But really, Morgan Fox is the starter. That's another reason. I'm just trying to think of something here. That's it. So, what do you guys think? I would love to know your answer to the question, if it's different than mine in particular. What's the difference in 2020 and 2021 season for Jerry Tillery to make the 2021 offseason the royal treatment and 2020 a complete replacement year? He hasn't proven himself kind of offseason. I understand fully that Tillery is not a good player. Talked about that. Statistically, on film, not a good player, unfortunately. I understand that, but he wasn't that before. <laughs> so what changed? I think I laid out five reasonable reasons. I think the first one that I talked about is very important. Whether it's true or not, I think, well, it kind of is. I'm, I'm hoping they lean into a true competition this year. But you know, I think all five reasons could contribute altogether to why things have changed. But what do you think? Did I miss something? There's definitely stuff that I missed. There always is. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Take care. And as always, bolt up.